Hi. In this segment I'm going to be talking about using a four plane to joint two pieces of western red cedar quarter sawn to make a ukulele top. Now, the reason I'm spending so much time talking about the joiner is that I think it's really, really critical to make a very nice, tight, close-fitting joint when you're gluing your top, back, and side woods together. The more accurate your jointing will be, the more accurate, more accuracy will show up in your final product. So in this demonstration video over here, I've got a 30 year old four plane, it's about approximately 18 inches long. The uh, core is made out of uh, American walnut and the sides are hard rock maple with an ash handle. It's about 18 inches long, it has a rosewood on the bottom and uh, the blade is a piece of really good ECE German uh, jack plane blade. It's about two inches wide and I've got the mouth set up for a very very fine gap. It's very critical in making a really tight joint. The gap in that area between the blade and the mouth of the of the plane and the sole is approximately 30 second of an inch. This blade here is set up with a 30 degree bevel angle for hardwoods and the occasional softer hardwoods like uh, spruce and mahogany or harder woods like rosewood. Now when you're doing your softer woods like cedar, uh, spruce and other light soft woods I've got a rebuilt 50 year old sergeant four plane. It's approximately 18 inches long has a corrugated sole. I strongly recommend using wax on the bottom so that it glides very very carefully across the top of the wood when you're jointing it. Now the bevel angle on this blade is approximately 25 degrees and 25 degrees is usually the recommended angle for softwoods like spruce, cedar, light hardwoods like basswood and balsa wood and ramen and so on and so forth. So you want a steeper angle 25 degrees for softwoods and 30 degrees for hardwoods. It does make a difference. Now in this sample demonstration here I'm going to be jointing a pair of 13 inch by approximately 4 and 3 quarter of an inch wide western red cedar plates for a tenor ukulele top. As you can see I've bundled these two together with some tape. The reason being, a lot of the luthier books recommend you put a spacer between your plates while you're letting them dry and wrapping it up with cord or tape or whatever so there's a dead air space between the two. I found that that never works even with quarter sawn wood in my basement because my basement goes through major changes in humidity from 70 to 75 percent in the summertime to approximately 30 percent in the winter time. If you have access to a hygrometer I would highly recommend building your instrument in a humidity between 40 and 55 percent and 60 and 75 degrees to uh, make sure that there's no wild swings in humidity and dryness when you're building the instrument. So I'll take the tape off this western red cedar top and what I will do is I will demonstrate to you my planing technique. I know there's a lot of planing techniques out there. A lot of books I've seen recommend putting your stuff on the side and all kinds of weird contortionist jigs which frankly I never found would work for me. So basically this is, I'm just showing you what works for me. This is what I've tried. I've tried many other people's ways and they haven't worked. If you find that this way doesn't work for you please try another, another method that does. I'm not saying my way is the only way, I'm just saying that my way is the way it works for me. So what I'm going to do first over here is take the piece of western red cedar and stick it in this vise. This vise was purchased at Woodcraft. It's a low-end, believe made in China vise and really, really does the job for me. 
it's got a lot of slack and play in it. And what I'll do is I'll take the plane and I'll knurl my, my left hand and fingers for righties and I will push the beginning of the cut and then go glidely through, smooth it through the back and come out through the end. Now I should set the plane blade for a cut that's going to take off some material. Typically what I'm aiming for is a cut between three and five thousandths of an inch. If you have access to a uh, pair of calipers or something to measure with, it would be, give you a very good idea of what you're shooting for. You don't want to take, take a thick, really thick shaving off of here because it'll make it that much harder to plane without any gaps in the wood. Start at the end, follow through smoothly, nicely and evenly. Okay, and I'll take the second piece. Okay, now I'll check. Now I've got quite, you can't see it on the camera here, but there's a gap between the top and the bottom. I'll take my second piece, put it in the vise, do the same procedure again. Curl my finger around the foreplane and slowly plane a straight line. One, two, three. I'll take the same amount of chips off each plate to try and make sure I'm doing it as evenly as I possibly can. And I'll hold it up to the light. And I still got a ways to go. Okay. So put it back together this time. What I'll do is I'll put the two of them together and I'll take one smooth shaving because I'm getting close. I can see that I've almost got a joining and there's no light between the two plates on either side. You have honestly absolutely no gap of light between the two. If there's any gap, go back and start all over again. If you're not sure of your planing skills, I strongly recommend practicing on scrap. Two by fours, spruce, pine, hemlock, cedar, whatever you have. Practice on scrap before you do the real thing so you don't waste a good pair of, or, of tops or backs or sides. The same theory that applies for tops applies to the side material and the back material, which in this case is going to be American sycamore or buttonwood, which is what I'm going to be using for this sample demonstration of how to make a tenor ukulele. Once I've got my plates lined up and I've got the perfect joint, I will put it in a jig. I'm demonstrating two jigs here. Each of them, this is a simple one, and I put, I put the plates together. I will key down a layer of wax paper on top of a sheet of three-quarter inch particle board or plywood, put down a bar. Clamp it down, okay, and then I'll lock the bar down so it's stationary, it doesn't move. My next step will be to put the plates together on top of the wax paper and butt them up against my ledger strip over here. And after that, I'll put on another sheet of wax paper and I'll clamp it, pull all the clamp, pull the clamps together and tighten everything up. Okay? That's one method. This is a very simple method. You might want to also use, before you put the clamps on, I forgot to show it to you, before you put that on, you might want to put this center piece over the top of the gluing. Call. This acts as a glue called top of your wax paper to make sure that there's no buckling of the small pieces. Okay. Here's another jig um, that is also used, it's a lot more complicated. It's basically used for. Okay. Thank you.